Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. My name is Talalipop and today we are doing a comparison on the 2023 Trek Fuel EX lineup. In this video I'm going to focus on the aluminum Fuel EX bikes, so I'll be covering the similarities and differences between the 2023 Trek Fuel EX 5, 7, and 8, so you can see exactly what changes on these bikes when you move up in price. I will mention that I'm specifically comparing the Fuel EX 5 Gen 5 with the Fuel EX 7 Gen 6 and Fuel EX 8 Gen 6, since the Fuel EX 5 does not have a new Gen 6 model. These are all still 2023 bikes, but the Gen 6 nomenclature refers to a newer, redesigned frame for the Fuel EX bikes, which I will cover in this video. And Trek is still selling the older Gen 5 frame versions of the Fuel EX 7 and 8, so if you are only interested in the older frames, check out my 2022 comparison video on the Fuel EX lineup. Uh, I'll link that video in the description below as well as on the top right of the screen right now. For this comparison, I will be highlighting all of the various components on these bikes in detail, such as the suspension, the brakes, and the drivetrains, and I'll fill out these three tables at the end of the video to show you all of those changes in one place. At the end, I'll also talk about my personal opinions on this lineup and which bike I think is the best overall. So if you do find this video helpful in any way and want to support me, I'd appreciate it a lot if you like the video and subscribe to the channel so I can continue making videos like this one. Now one disclaimer I have to mention is that Trek is still experiencing part shortages in certain areas, so I have actually seen a lot of the bikes in this video coming with completely different parts. Uh, I've seen three different brakes being used on the Fuel EX 8 and Fuel EX 7, three different crank sets and other stuff like that. But it would make this video way too long if I were to cover all of those changes, so I will go based off of what Trek has officially listed on their website. But if you do get a part that is different than what I have talked about, it should be pretty similar to the one mentioned in this video. All right, but let's start off the comparison with a background on the bikes that I'm gonna talk about. The Trek Fuel EX is Trek's most popular full suspension mountain bike, meaning that it has suspension in the front and in the rear for more capability and comfort. There are a ton of different models available ranging from about $3,000 to over $10,000. And there are aluminum and carbon fiber frames available, but in this video I will only be covering the less expensive aluminum bikes. These bikes are all mountain trail bikes from Trek, so they're great at both uphill climbing and downhill descending, and can thus be used as your one and only mountain bike to tackle everything you throw at it. All of these bikes are offered in sizes extra small to extra extra large, so we have a lot of different sizes available. Additionally, all the bikes come with 29 inch diameter wheels, except the extra small frame size which only comes with 27 and a half inch diameter wheels to make it more comfortable for smaller riders. And the small frame bike is the only size that allows you to choose either a 27.5 or a 29 inch wheel size. For the actual comparison, I'll start off with the similarities among the three bikes. And actually the only shared parts they have are the wheel hubs. So all the bikes use Bontrager alloy hubs with boost 110 spacing in the front and boost 148 in the rear, which is standard for higher end mountain bikes, as well as the Shimano micro spline free hub that is used for Shimano 12 speed drivetrains. But the main difference is that the Fuel X5 has 54 points of engagement in the rear hub, while the higher end bikes have 108 points of engagement. More engagement points means that the crank arm engages the rear wheel quicker, and that makes the bike more efficient and prevents pedal strikes. But now it's time to talk about the differences, starting with the price. These prices can change, but currently the 2023 Fuel EX5 Gen 5 is priced at $2,700, while the Fuel EX7 Gen 6 is priced exactly $1,000 more at $3,700. And finally, the Fuel EX 8 Gen 6 is $600 more than that at $4,300. So for these price increases, let's see what you get. For some color differences, the Fuel EX 5 comes in the color Lithium Gray and Marigold, as well as Matte Neister Black, while the new Fuel EX 7 comes in Hex Blue, and also Matte Neister Black. And finally, the Fuel EX 8 comes in Matte Penny Flake, and a galactic gray to black fade. Component-wise, we gotta talk about these frames first. So in terms of frame features, both frames have some similarities, since they are both made from Trek's highest end alpha platinum aluminum, internal cable routing, ISCG5 mounts for a chain guide and bash guard to protect your crank set and chain from damage, and Trek's Minolink system that allows you to switch the geometry of the bike between a low and high setting, which changes some measurement values. 
However, the Gen 6 frame has a few extra features, like a larger down tube guard to protect your bike from rocks and shuttle damage, a universal derailleur hanger, and of course, internal frame storage, which is new for the aluminum Felix bikes. This frame also removes Trek's knock block feature entirely, which is good to see since now you have more steering range, but the main difference is that the new frame adds a lot more adjustability in the geometry category. For one, you can adjust the leverage ratio of the suspension by flipping a separate chip near the shock to change the suspension feel from plusher and less progressive, meaning that a more equal amount of force is needed to compress the shock along its full amount of travel, to more progressive, which means that the harder you press down on the shock, the more difficult it will be to compress it, which prevents you from bottoming out on large hits. Now fortunately, this also means that you can replace the air shock with a coil shock on this Feely X, which is not a very viable possibility on the Gen 5 frame. Additionally, the Gen 6 comes with adjustable headset cups that actually allow you to change the head tube angle by around 2 degrees from the slackest setting to the steepest setting, and I tried simplifying some of this in a table here. You can see that all of the geometry measurements uh, in the low and high settings are dictated by the slash mark, and all the values for the Gen 6 frame are in the neutral headset setting. In general, what these measurements mean are that the new Feely X will be better at climbing and descending than the previous Gen 5 version, and from the reviews that I've seen on this frame, it's definitely a big improvement over the Gen 5 all around. And one last feature of the Gen 6 is that you can actually put a smaller 27.5 inch wheel in the rear for a mullet setup that is more aggressive and faster in the front while remaining maneuverable in the rear for better cornering. Lastly, all of these differences do impact the weight of the frames, so the Gen 6 frame does weigh about 2 pounds more than the Gen 5. Alright, that was a lot of information and I didn't cover everything in full detail, but you get the idea that the new frame is much more adjustable, has better geometry, and is a big improvement over the Gen 5 frame. Now let's cover all of the other parts on these bikes. For the front suspension forks, all the bikes come with air forks that are adjustable for your weight, and all of these have suspension lockouts and a 15mm through axle for better strength. The Felix 5 uses a RockShox Recon Silver Fork with a motion control damper, 32mm wide upper stanchions, and 140mm of suspension travel, while the Felix 7 Gen 6 upgrades to the RockShox 35 Gold with wider 35mm stanchions for added stiffness and stability, as well as a Debon Air Spring which makes the fork more efficient by essentially becoming stiffer in flatter areas. This fork also has 150 millimeters of travel to handle bigger bumps and is more downhill focused than the Recon Silver. And the Fuli X8 uses the 150 millimeter Fox Rhythm 36 fork with 36 millimeter wide stanchions for even more strength, as well as the Fox Grip Damper. This is the lowest end version of the Fox 36, but I would still consider an upgrade over the RockShox 35 since it is stronger and has similar dampers. For the rear shocks, the Fuli X5 Gen 5 uses an entry level shock, which is the X Fusion Pro 2 shock with a two position damper, so it is either fully engaged or fully locked out, and it has 130mm of travel. The Fuli X7 upgrades to the Fox Performance Float Evolve shock that has a three position DPS damper, which is pretty efficient, and gives you a middle adjust setting that is stiffer for harder hits, but not fully locked out. This shock also increases in travel to 140mm to take bigger hits. And the Fuli X8 uses the 140mm Fox Performance Flow X shock that also has a two position damper like the Fuli X5, but this shock is a lot better since it has an external reservoir and much better damping to tackle rougher stuff on the trail. Okay, next we have the rims and tires. All the bikes use tubeless ready rims with 6 bolt disc brake mounts and a 12mm through axle in the rear to increase strength. The Fuel X5 uses an Alex MD35 wheel set that has a large 35mm inner width, but that also makes it heavier. The Fuel X7 and 8 both upgrade to the Bontrager Line Comp 30 wheels, which are lighter and have a 29mm inner width. And for the tires, the Fuli X5 uses Bontrager XR4 comp tires that are wire bead and not tubeless ready. These are 30 TPI and 2.6 inches wide in the front and rear. These are good tires in terms of their tread pattern, but on Trek's website, the specs do state that the Fuli X5 may come with Maxxis Recon tires instead, and if that's the case, that would be an upgrade for sure since those tires are indeed tubeless ready. 
The other bikes use the Bontrager XR5 Team Issue tires, which are tubeless ready and are 120 TPI, so they are more flexible and have better construction overall, and they do have a heavier casing for increased durability. These are also 2.6 inches wide for a good amount of grip and stability on the trail. But the last difference is that the Fuel X5 still comes with inner tubes installed, while the 7 and 8 come with tubeless sealant installed, so you do have a full tubeless setup and, as a result, less risk of getting a flat on your bike, and you can run lower pressures in your tire to improve stability. Moving on, let's talk about the brakes. All the bikes use hydraulic disc brakes with a 180mm wide brake rotor in the rear. The Fuel X5 uses Shimano MT200 two-piston brakes, which are pretty entry-level and are found on bikes around the $700 range, so that's unfortunate to see on a bike that costs $2,000 more. This bike comes with a 180mm wide brake rotor in the front as well. And then the Fuel X7 Gen 6 comes with the Shimano 4-piston MT420 brakes, which are definitely better since they have two more pistons per caliper for much better stopping power, but they do still have similar brake levers to the MT200s. This bike does make a nice upgrade to a 203mm wide front brake rotor, which provides much better stopping power as well. And finally, the Fuel X8 upgrades further to the 4-piston Shimano Dior level M6120 brakes, which also come with a 203mm front rotor, but these brakes have a short reach lever for better brake modulation and control, and higher quality brake calipers with better stopping power. Now for the seat posts, all of the bikes use internally routed dropper posts with 100mm of travel in the extra small and small frame sizes. For the Fuel X5 and all other sizes, the bike uses the 31.8mm wide Trans X JD dropper post with 130mm of travel. The Fuel X7 upgrades to the wider 34.9mm Trans X JD post with 170mm of travel, or 150 for sizes medium and medium large, so you can get the seat even lower for rougher terrain to get better balance on the bike. Then the Fuel X8 also uses a 349mm Trans X dropper with 170 or 150mm of travel, but this dropper has some higher quality materials to make it smoother and more reliable, and it does use a better quality dropper lever as well. Then for the seats, the Fuel X5 and 7 both use the Bontrager Arvada saddle with steel rails, which is very common on Trek bikes at lower price points. But the Fuel X8 upgrades to the same seat, but with hollow chromoly rails that are lighter in weight. Heading to the cockpit, the handlebars are very similar for the Fuel X5 and 7 as they have the same specifications, with a 31.8mm clamp diameter, 15mm rise, and a 750mm width, but the 7 just has a lighter weight bar. The 8 makes a good upgrade to a 35mm clamp handlebar that is much stronger, and this one has more rise at 27.5mm for a more upright position while riding downhill, and a wider 780mm wide bar for better control while turning. To complement those bars, we have some Bond Trigger stems, with the Fuel X5 using a 31.8mm diameter stem that is 50mm long, and the 7 actually using a lower quality stem that is 50mm long in most sizes, but this one has a 7 degree rise. And finally, the 8 has a Bontrager Elite stem that is better quality and shorter at 45mm in most sizes for some better control, and it fits the wider 35mm clamp handlebar. Now let's discuss the final difference, which is the drivetrain. I'm going to first go over the drivetrains as a whole before moving on to the individual parts. So the Fuel X5 uses the Shimano Dior M6100 1x12, which is Shimano's lowest end 12-speed drivetrain, but still a very good one nonetheless. And then the Fuel X7 upgrades to a mixed 1x12 drivetrain with Shimano Dior, SLX, and XT components. Then the Fuel X8 upgrades even more to a mainly Shimano XT M8100 1x12. For the individual parts, I'm going to start off with the shifters. The Fuel X5 uses the Shimano Dior M6100 shifter, which allows you to shift up to 3 gears at once when going to an easier gear for pedaling, and it actually lets you shift to a harder gear in two different ways, by either pushing on the shift lever with your thumb, or pulling on it with your index finger, so you have the option. Then the Shimano SLX shifter on the Fuel X7 has the exact same performance capabilities in shifting, but it provides better materials for construction to make it lighter and more reliable. And the Shimano XT M8100 shifter on the EX8 is a big upgrade since it allows you to downshift up to 4 gears at a time, and upshift up to 2 gears at a time as well, 
and it also uses that two-way shift design so you can push or pull the trigger shifter. So lots of features packed into this one and of course it is a bit lighter than the SLX shifter. Next we have the rear derailers. Both the Fuli X7 and 8 use the very high-end Shimano Dior XT rear derailleur, but regardless all of the derailleurs have clutch mechanisms to tension the chain, so there is a significantly decreased risk of the chain falling off the bike or malfunctioning at all. Moving from the Dior level to the XT level, you get much better quality of materials that make the derailleur more durable and resistant to bending, and you also get more advanced technology like Shimano's Hyperglide Plus that allows for faster and quieter shifting. However, the regular Dior is still a great derailleur. For the gears, the cranksets are pretty similar since all the bikes use 30 tooth chain rings, so the only differences are just higher quality materials and durability as you go up the range, as well as lighter weight materials to make pedaling easier. The cassettes are the same Shimano Dior level for the Fuli X5 and 7, and this is a great cassette that works well and is lightweight enough, but the Shimano XT cassette on the Fuli X8 is much lighter in weight. Besides that, they are pretty similar and even have the same gear ranges for 10 teeth on the smallest cog and 51 teeth on the largest cog, which is a very wide range, so that's great to see. I will not focus much on the chains or bottom brackets, but I will note that the new Felix models now come with a threaded bottom bracket for ease of maintenance and less noise while riding. And the final difference between these bikes is the weight. All the bikes are weighed in a size medium frame, and the Fuli X5 weighs 34.62 pounds with inner tubes installed. The Fuli X7 actually weighs more at 35.21 pounds with tubeless sealant in the tires, and the 8 weighs 34.51 pounds with sealant as well. Alright, but now we are finally done with this comparison. I'll show the completed tables on the screen right now, but for my personal thoughts, I'm upset that Trek did not upgrade more on the Fuli X5 for the new year, since this bike is actually the same as the 2022 and 2021 version of the bike, and that annoys me because this bike used to cost around $2,000 or $2,100, and now it costs $600 more with no changes at all. I know bike prices are going up, but it still would have been nice to see any upgrade, like maybe tubeless ready tires or something, but that being said, the bike is still the least expensive full suspension bike that you can get from Trek, but I would personally go for one of the other models in the range since you get that brand new frame that is way better for trail riding. In terms of the Fuli X7 versus 8, I am torn between the two since the 8 does provide a good amount of upgrades over the 7, since it has basically better everything, better brakes, suspension, drivetrain, cockpit, like it's all great, uh, but I'm too tempted to just go for the Carbon 9.7 bike at that point, especially since it's only $300 more than the EX8 to get the Carbon one. Therefore, I think I'd go with the Fuli X7 Gen 6 if I had to pick one of these, and just upgrade parts or eventually sell that one to get the Carbon model later on. However, if I was going to keep that bike for a long period of time, I would probably go with the 8 and just have a really nice trail bike that I don't really have to worry about. Those are just my opinions though, I'm excited to read what you guys think in the comments below, so definitely let me know, but besides that, thank you all for watching, and remember to keep biking out there.